Hey family, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon everyone. I just wanted to pop on really quickly. Hey Lee, thanks number, thanks for being here. I just wanted to pop on real quickly. I'm actually, hey Ma, thanks for being here. I'm here with my oldest son, Malam. Hey everybody. Hope you're doing well this Sunday. Hey. hey everybody. We are actually in Los Angeles. I'm helping him move into his apartment today. He's a senior, guys, at uh, Loyola Marymount. So I'm very proud of him, very excited for him. And so um, this is not going to be a, a long live. Um, I just wanted to come on really quickly and answer a question that I got in my DM a lot this week about the COVID vaccine. And um, hey, number, hey, uh, Auntie Lee says, hi, son. Oh, hi. <laughs> So I just wanted to come on real quickly and answer a question that's been in my inbox about the COVID vaccine. Um, but before I do that, let me say this, because I think sometimes, and I'm going to speak to uh, all of us who may have uh, children my son's age and a little bit younger, let's make sure that we um, do some standard things with them. I'm going to, I won't share details, but, you know, things uh, that we take for granted that maybe we did with our generation, things, you know can openers, money orders, and that type of stuff, our, our, our children are largely very electronic. So let's make sure we keep that in mind as we, um, as we go through that process. Right, son? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the question that I kept getting was about uh, whether or not the COVID vaccine affects our DNA. And I wanted to explain to you guys that um, no, it, it absolutely does not. The COVID vaccine is an mRNA vaccine. That means it's a messenger RNA vaccine. By messenger, what it means is that it carries a message to our cells so that our cells can get prepared in case they see the actual uh, COVID-19 virus. And so what does that mean? Um, that when we get the vaccine, the messenger RNA goes to our cells. Now our cells, if you remember um, from science class, you know, think of like two or three concentric circles, the smallest one inside the circle being the nucleus. So this vaccine with the messenger RNA, it doesn't go into that smallest circle, that nu nucleus, it goes into the outer circle. So it goes into our cells without going into that inner circle. That inner circle or the nucleus is where our DNA lives. So the, the vaccine never goes there to where the DNA are. It goes into that outer circle. By doing that, it helps our bodies by um, giving us information to trigger a response so that if we see that actual COVID virus, the body knows how to respond to it. It's kind of like, um, you guys remember when we were younger and we would say, you know, psych, it's, it's kind of like the vaccine is doing that. It's, it's giving our body a little bit of an introduction of something, uh, but it's really like a psych because it's not the actual virus, it's a, a spike protein. It's um, a protein that our bodies would recognize if the full virus came into our systems. Okay, so I just wanted to, um, to try to explain that to people because that's a, a question that I get from a lot of um, patients about whether or not this COVID vaccine goes in and alters our DNA. It does not alter our DNA, the messenger RNA uh, actually allows our body to uh, to get prepared in case it does see the full virus by just giving us, uh, showing us a little part of the spike protein. Um, something else that I want to address because um, this was a question that also, and I actually had this question too, about how quickly the vaccine was developed and whether or not we could trust it because it was developed so quickly. Uh, the technology that was working on messenger RNA tech, uh, uh, for vaccine use was actually in development for the last um, at least excuse me at least 10 years. I think you guys have um, probably heard about the, um, the the sister, the black woman who's been doing some of the research, Dr. Kizzy Corbett. Um, she is one of the, the leaders in terms of working on this technology. And so the technology had been in development this whole time. What happened when the COVID pandemic uh, hit last year is that we had this almost a perfect storm of this um, very deadly pandemic along with some technology that had been in development for some years but not truly used to create a vaccine. And so with the, the urgency that everyone felt in terms of trying to develop something, 
uh, it was decided to try to use this mRNA vaccine technology that had been worked on for many years, along with what people had been studying and knew about COVID-19, the, the virus, and try to put that together to come up with something that might work for um, for this pandemic. And, you know, thankfully it worked. The technology that had been in development for some years, along with um, a piece of uh, something, a spike protein from the virus to get our bodies to react in a way and, um, and build up a defense if we're exposed to COVID-19 after receiving the vaccine. And so, um, so I just wanted to, to put that out there. Yes, it does appear that everything happened very quickly after we started in this pandemic uh, early in 2020. But the reason it looked like that is because the mRNA vaccine technology had been worked on for at least uh, 10 years before um, before this happened. Hey, let me just say hi, hey to some people who are here. Hey, Namba, hey, Esther. Hey, Cheryl, day one. Thank y'all for being here. I appreciate y'all. So um, again, um, I just wanted to come on really quickly and say that to y'all. I'm in LA with son number one. Hel say oh, hi again, son. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so I'm here with son number one, get, helping him get moved into his apartment. I just wanted to come on and answer those questions that have been popping up in my inbox about whether or not the vaccine affects our DNA. It does not. Um, again, the mRNA goes into the outer part of the cell causes a reaction or, and produces antibodies that will allow the body to recognize if the actual um, vaccine were to come into our bodies. That way it could be ready to respond when something um, does happen. Uh, uh, and also, again, the cell is this big outer circle. The inner circle is the nucleus where the DNA lives, and the vaccine does not go into that inner circle. It does not go in and affect our DNA. Okay? So I just wanted to, um, to try to help explain that for people. And the second thing I wanted to explain again, which is something that I had questions about early on, was um, the speed with which this happened. It appeared that way because um, we just heard about COVID-19 at the end of 2019, but the technology, the mRNA vaccine technology had been worked on for a long time. So um, again, we had this um, almost a perfect storm of things. And thankfully we had, someone had been working on the technology for a long time, um, Sister Dr. Uh, Kizzy Corbett. So definitely look her up. She's someone you should know about. It's Black History Month and, and that sister really has been an implemental part of, um, of what is going on with the COVID vaccine and the response to this pandemic that we're seeing. She's a, she's a brilliant young sister. Um, and so please, by all means, look her up and know about her as part of Black History Month. If, if you love science, if you are interested in learning more about the COVID vaccine process, um, she's absolutely someone that you could read about and trust in terms of what's been going on with vaccine development. So um, I'm going to leave it there. Okay, thanks. Hello, everyone. I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to get back to helping son number one or nephew number one get okay. all moved into his place. Y'all, please uh, keep us in your thoughts and prayers. This is going to be his last semester at Loyola Marymount, and we're very excited for him. We're very proud of him and uh, looking forward to all that he will continue to do. And um, I'll be back and doing a regular full... Oh, Oh, hey, Chandra said, oh, hey, thanks for joining us, Chandra. Thank you. I have been hesitant to get the vaccine as a nurse practitioner. It made me ashamed because I know better. Oh, don't be ashamed, um, Sandra. I, I feel you, though. I was in that exact same space um, probably as recently as uh, six to eight weeks ago. And um, I literally, I, you know, I sat down. I kept looking at everything over and over again. And um, I just got to the space where I started to feel more comfortable because I was um, you know, reading more and hearing more about the science. I was a bit able to take a look at it without all of the, um, you know, the filters, the political filters that ha had been going on, which, uh, you know, certainly were, were, were problematic in terms of allowing us as consumers and scientists to see the information without all the politics that were going on. So, um, so definitely I understand. And um, also as I started to read more from uh, and hear more from from us people you know black and brown scientists and um, other medical persons who were involved I started to be able to get more of the information that I thought was really helpful for me to understand what was going on and you know and um, I don't know if you uh, see that Chandra but you know what I'm seeing clinically 
made me start thinking, okay, well, this vaccine could be an extra layer of protection. And certainly compared to what we're seeing in the, the clinics and the hospitals and the emergency rooms, um, I wanted to have an extra layer of protection. So, and I want to get back to um, seeing family and friends and, and um, doing all those things that we, we love to do that keep us whole and that allow us to take care of ourselves so that we can um, definitely take care of others. Uh, and Chandra says, yes, I feel better. Pfizer versus Moderna. Great question. I got Pfizer. Um, I did fine with it. I'm about a month past um, both doses. Um, my mom got Moderna. I know many uh, clinical people who got Moderna. They're doing well. And um, I, I think you can't necessarily go wrong with either one. We're looking at effectiveness rates of about 95% and 93%. 95% for Pfizer, about 93, 94% for Moderna. The new one that is probably going to be FDA approved in a couple of weeks, uh, the Johnson & Johnson one, we know it's lower in terms of effect effectiveness, uh, I think in the 70% range in the US, but, um, but even that 70% is not bad. Now that 70% is with one shot. One of the things they're thinking about is adding a second shot with the Johnson and Johnson to try to get it up to a higher number. We'll we'll have to see what happens with that. But um, what is true of all three of them, based on the data I've seen and read, is that they're all, you know, 99, 100 percent effective in terms of keeping you from getting severely sick and from keeping you out of the ICU. Um, so that's that's great, whichever one you uh, you get. So. Um, you know, as more data and information comes out, I'll definitely share updates as I learn more. Please, you guys, um, as you read stuff and if you have questions, just, um, you know, send me something in, in the DM or type a question here and um, and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out together, okay? Because we're all on this learning curve and trying to stay safe and healthy through this pandemic so that we can, you know, keep on uh, living and loving ourselves and loving the ones that we love and being able to see and spend time with them. So with that said, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to get back to helping uh, son number one Bye, move everybody. into his spot. And um, I look forward to seeing y'all back next week. If you're watching the Super Bowl, please do so safely. Um, please, um, even if you're vaccinated, still avoid big crowds, uh, wear your mask, hand washing, social distancing, all that stuff that you guys have been hearing for the last, I guess, a year at this point. I love you guys very much and um, y'all stay safe, okay? I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.